Hey class, it's Nick. Uh, I got a quick tutorial for you uh, for how to get your Rhino models uh, into your photo collages. Um, I'll start off with the with the demo that I did um, a few weeks ago with Times Square. I've got my model. Uh, it's sort of like synchronized to this camera view here. You can see, um, and I've got this arch, and everything's to scale. Um, I understand where my horizon line is, you know, um, and I'm I'm ready to go into Mate 2D. Um, but a problem that I have seen is that, uh, you know, like some of you have mentioned that some of the lines don't come in or like some of the curves don't come in. Um, let's take a look at that. So if I go in and I say make 2D and I'll select everything and then I'm going to uh, basically set my settings, hidden lines. I, you can show the viewport rectangle. That might be useful later. Um, go ahead and click OK. Let's go to the top view and let's look at our items. And you, you can see, let me go ahead and export this actually, uh, so we can we can take a closer look at it. Uh, let's see here, I'm going to call this uh, Times Square Test 1. Okay, and, and open it up in Illustrator. Ah, man, see, so we got some edges that aren't like coming together here. We've missed the entire side of this um, wall and uh, the back of the arch. So that that's not cool. That's not going to really help. Um, so what do we do? Well, I'm going to close this out. Actually, let's keep it open for comparison. Um, what happens sometimes in Rhino is that the tolerances are set to uh, low. Um, remember, Rhino is a precision modeler, and so tolerances, which means like how tightly things uh, fit together, um, are pretty important. Um, why aren't the tolerances cranked up like all the way? Well, it takes more memory um, to really be that precise. Um, you only want to use the level of tolerance um, that you that you need for the model that you're making. And when our model is the size of a you know piece of a city, it's okay to have kind of a low tolerance, right? Because things are very um, are very big. Um, so if you're off by an inch or so, right, that's not a big deal. Or even or even a tenth of an inch, right, that's not um, a very big deal. The only problem comes in is that when you're trying to um, project the lines in 3D space uh, so that you can do the make 2D command, um, if the tolerances are not high enough, right, the pieces, like, don't quite fit together. And that's exactly what's happening in this, in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and kill these lines, go back to my uh, camera view, and I'm going to change the tolerances. So you go to File, uh, Properties, and you go into Document Properties, Units, and uh, Absolute Tolerance. Go ahead and add a zero. Click OK. Now if I run Make 2D, and just like everything, go back to the top view. You can see I actually get my lines uh, back. And that also helps with um, with things like curves as well. That, 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 that should help. Um, so if I go in, I go into Illustrator open up my, my new file, night and day, right? Well, at least <laughs> lines and uh, m more lines, basically. Um, so then the next step is to actually uh, process the image uh, so we can take it into Photoshop. So we go ahead and select everything really quick uh, and just scale it down a bit. Or you could increase the size of the artboard um, alternately, but I do this for a reason. Well, actually, it's nice It's nice if you keep the um, viewport uh, um, the viewport window, because what happens is that if you don't have that, right, these uh, these edges are going to be open, um, and it's going to make the next part harder. So actually, exporting a viewport uh, like window is not a, not a bad idea. What we're going to do is we're going to use the um, the fill tool, uh, the live paint tool, to basically fill uh, these things with uh, color, and that's going to make them solid, uh, and that's going to help us Photoshop them. So if I go into my yeah, if I open this up, I'm just going to pull it out. And I want the live paint uh, bucket. Uh, first of all, though, I'm going to select everything and give it a nice uh, stroke weight of one. You don't want things to be too thick or 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 too thin. I notice a lot of them are are really thick. Um, this is kind of the weight you want, just enough to establish it as a as a line. Um, let's go into the uh, layers. I'm going to turn off the uh, hidden layers. I don't really don't really want those lines right now. Um, go ahead and select everything. It's very important when using live paint, you, you want to select everything that you want to uh, paint. It's basically like something that's sort of, you know, like it's going to basically flood fill it or kind of like a coloring book where you're going to color in between the lines. So you want to select all the lines that you're going to be working with. Um, oh, another thing actually that I want to do 
as well. It's just it's just put something in the background. If I'm gonna fill things with white, I need something for them to contrast against so that I know uh, that I'm actually filling something. So I usually drop a little piece of gray on a new layer and just lock it. Uh, let's go back to the other layer, select everything, go to our live paint. Now I can select a color for the fill, okay, and I can begin to uh, fill these things in, right? So now I've got that nice white piece there. Maybe the wall in the back is is red. We're kind of going for white most of the time, but I just wanted to show you um, what that looks like. Okay, so I've got that, and uh, and basically what happens is is that if you go in, you've got this um, live paint object. Um, what I can do with that is um, I can go in and I can say um, ungroup, and that'll actually give me um, actually if I go in to live paint, um, I can say uh, expand and then ungroup. And that'll give me two groups. Um, one group is going to be the lines, and the other group are the fills. Okay, so that's kind of handy. And then if I go in, I can actually go in and ungroup the line group, and then I can delete things like this outside line if I want to. And I could even go in with my pen tool then, and uh, in this layer here, and then just add the, the remaining uh, the remaining lines if I if I if I need those. So it's nice. The live paint actually allows you to separate the uh, fills um, from the lines, and that allows me to do things like um, you know I could actually like select. Um, I'm going to select everything and then deselect the fill here. Um, I can go in and I can adjust those weights again if I want to. If I wanted, I'll, I'll bump them up to a 2 or something like that. That's too chunky, though. But anyway, that's that's available to you. Once you've got this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill this background layer. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and export it uh, as a Photoshop file. So PSD. And its resolution's fine uh, for the prints you guys are making. You can bump it up if you like, but that's fine. 150 PPI is fine. Um, you can just use the default options. It's not that big of a deal. Basically, what you're going to do is <clears throat> you're going to open this stuff up in Photoshop. You're going to open up your uh, base image. And then you're going to open up the uh, file that you just created. And then you take this image, and actually, one thing that I've noticed, uh, that it's they don't always, like, uh, actually, let me go ahead and flatten this, um, or, let's see here, this, this is actually considered a group, so I'm just going to merge it so that I get the, uh, yeah, I just get the lines here, and then I'm going to copy it and paste it, and notice, you know, it's not to scale, and you're like, oh, I don't know how this thing is gonna, actually going to fit in there. Uh, properly. So uh, one one thing that you can do is um, you can go into your image that you have here, where you can actually um, I'm gonna delete these lines here. Um, go into my view again, and you can do wireframe or you know whatever. Um, and then I'm basically gonna do a screen capture. So um, option shift three or uh, shift print screen, or you can use the snipping tool or whatever in Windows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, uh, a screen capture, and then I'm going to um, basically uh, paste that into my, uh, my scene here. And this is going to allow me to line those two things up. So I'm going to make the opacity 50%, and I'm going to try to like match up you know this tower here. So let's call it 125%. Nope, not big enough. 150%. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. Okay, just gotta nudge it a little bit. And then that'd be precise, right? Because this isn't exactly precise anyway. But then I've got that, and then if I put my um if I take my my other piece that I have, I can scale it um and position it exactly uh how I want to. And that's kinda nice. Perfect. So that lines up. Or at least close enough, right? Then I've got my image in my scene. But of course, right, it doesn't look right. Like, the depth of the image, like, is really kind of funky. Um, why? Well, because it's, like, 
in front of people's heads, and it's cutting off the tops of cabs, and there's this light pole that it's in front of. Like, it's very obvious that it's like a sticker on top of the image. So the next thing you want to do is I would turn the opacity down, you know, slightly so you can get a chance to look at it. You have to be aware of where the objects are um, depth-wise, like how, how far they are, right? So that you can either cut things out of the images or, or at least uh, paste them on top of the image. Uh, you, can, you can do this, you know, like both ways, basically. Put, put foreground elements on top of it or erase parts of the middle ground image, the rhino image, so that um, you, you, you get those, like, depth cues. Um, this image is really busy. It's, if you were going to do this with your photo collages, you'd have far fewer things, and this might be very easy then, because you might just be able to have a couple things in the background and then just pasting your own foreground elements um, on top of the image. In that case, you're basically done at this point. Um, you've already got the image in. Um, otherwise, if, you're, if you have something that's more complex, uh, or, or, or if you have things in, in the foreground of the true image that you want to keep, um, you can do this. So what I can do is I can use the uh, selection tool to, um, you know, basically take this um, light pole. And you would be more careful with this than I am, but I'm doing this very quickly. And once you get below the image, you have to be very precise. But so you take the, especially for objects that have their linear. Your hand is never going to be as steady as the. Um, the polygon tool, right? Oops. There you go. So you can delete that. I can also use the eraser, right? Well, again, with very, very careful or more precise control to take things like this person who's standing in my foreground, right? And I could go with the polygon tool and knock this out too. Let's take a look at that image. See, and, and uh, once you turn it back on, much better, right, that these things are in front, that you get, you get a sense. But, you know, I've got these people, um, you know, at this table here, it's very obvious that their heads are getting cut off. Really having a minimal composition that we've been talking about, like the Mies van der Rohe, you know, the Rem Koolhaas, um, greatly simplifies this. But you know, this is a technique that you can apply that that should um, that should help. And again, I'm erasing at 100, percent and I'm if I was doing this for real, I'd be more careful. I'd be really careful to select the pixels. I don't want any ghosting around my people. more that you can break up the visual field of the image correctly, mind you, not just for its own sake, but oops, I didn't do a very good job there. The more you can break it up and put things between you and the middle ground that have depth, the happier your your brain's gonna be, right? Because it's going to make that image make sense. Here it's actually not just this guy in the hat, but probably the side of this cab too. Exciting. Okay. Um, same thing here. I probably take this cab and add it to the world. Probably do a lot of these cabs really. So just this idea that there's something in front of that image. I'm not gonna do all these cabs. Um, you would though. And then I'm just going to knock out this pole here. Okay, let's just take a look back and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's already better. Okay. Now it's in the image, right? It's not just, um, a sticker. Okay, so that's basically the technique that we've kind of been you know, like pushing for, and, and, and that's a, and that's a way to get these like rhinoceros elements um, into your you know into your photo collages. And I think this really communicates this idea of background 
middle ground, foreground element. Okay. Um, okay. So if you have any questions about um, how this works, if your objects are still not working in Rhino, um, go ahead and send me an email. Um, I'll see what I can do to help you out. Thanks.